God. It's amazing how our heavenly Father recognizes Himself. The one that in the song, the one that stood out for me, He says, "I am the great I am." And normally, what I feel the Lord saying, normally when you introduce yourself, you say, "I am," mm. and then you end up. Uh, we end up uh, having wrong declarations of our lives. So you can say, "I am sick." But is that the truth? When God is saying, I am the great I am, meaning he identifies himself with the term I am. And when we call ourselves, when you say, like when you introduce yourself and say, I am, sickness is not part of who you are or, or hardships. And like <laughs> this, this song is just like, honestly, like I'm just joyful concerning the song because recently I've, I've been having setbacks. My, like I'm investing in ships and they're just dying. And this song is just great because that does not define, God is still God. Like he does not Amen. define, it does not define me. The, the thing Amen. is I, I am a son of God. Like he loves me regardless. So it's just an encouragement to everyone of us. If you the Lord saying regardless of everything that is happening, remember I am. Now when you say I am, put it with the, right declaration when the word says that you're strong you're not weak so don't call yourself weak. call yours call yourself what god calls you thank you amen amen so good Rehema. that is awesome wow wonderful how about others yes keno yes thank you pastor rebecca and the, the last bit of the song it mentions about the glory in you glory in you and and that really um <clears throat> really draw my attention and and you know because when, when we hear this song it, it can be a distant uh, incident when we talk about mary this two thousand years ago he bared it uh he was impregnated by the holy spirit uh with the messiah christ the son of god himself in in her and all the destiny that's actually wrapped up within mary you know and i mean this is this is the the great redemption plan of of god but mary gets to be part of that and mm. and you know what is that to do with us today and i just want to i just felt the lord is saying that the glory is in each and every one of us you know that colossians 1 27 is it says uh to the gentiles uh, let me let me just read it correctly okay uh, colossians 1 27 say to them god will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? You know, all of us are Gentiles, okay? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. So, I mean, that's, we, we are the bearer of God's glory in us because we have Christ in us, each and every one of us uh, today, you know, as sons and daughters of God. And when, when we see, you know, what, this is the destiny that uh, is, God has actually put in us, you know, we, we are, meant to be kings and royal priests anointed king and royal or royal priests you know mm -hmm. to to see the kingdom expanded through the work of our hands through our lives and everything the promises the blessing uh, all the, the hope of glory that is actually uh god has embedded in our life within us you know and, and we need to you know i just pray the holy spirit just going to open our eyes to see yet the destiny that God has for each and every one of us. It is, it is something glorious to look forward to. So, so yeah, there's, there's always hope and there's a, a glorious hope that we need to look forward to, you know, what God has given us and we just need to outlive that in our lives, yeah. Amen, amen. So good. Thank you, Keno. Papa Luke. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome. It's amazing, Ken, you talk about, you know, people sing that song each time you call Mary, it is 2,000 years ago, such mm. a distant kind of a thing. But, you know, I, I felt the Holy Spirit just latch on that word you just mentioned, Ken, and to personalize it to each and every one of us, saying, Ken, do you know what is inside of you? Matthew, do you know what is inside of you? Zippy. Hey, do you know what is inside of you? You Josie, have taken the question from me. <laughs> do you know what is inside of you? Jane, do you know what is inside of you? 
Rehina, do you know what is inside of you? Nathan, do you know what is inside of you? Uh, favorite Steve, do you know what is inside of you? Pastor Ronald, do you know what is inside of you? Perry, Baruka, Barucha, do you know what is inside of you? And of course, my queen, uh, my princess, Pastor Rupika, do you know what is inside? This is, the, 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 is, the Holy Spirit is quickening something inside of us that every one of us, there is a seed in us that is greater, the kind of seed that was in Mary that become the savior of the world, that become the king of kings and lord of lords. There is another seed in us because God is not finished yet. Mm -hmm. God is still moving. God is still doing wonders. And those seeds are locked in each and every one of us. Yes. And the, the world is waiting for that. Yes. Can we believe that today? Yes. Yes. God's seed in, in, is in us because we are ready to release another aspect of heaven here on earth. Mm -hmm. Your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Isn't yes. that amazing? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many Amen. of us receive Amen. that? Glory. I receive it. I do. Amen. I receive. Amen. 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 We need to. We need to because if we're going to move in power, we need to receive it. Papa, look. Thank you. <laughs> That's what happened when you done that. Uh, it's it's okay. Don't... No, no, I'm pleased for that because <laughs> that's... First. <laughs> no, it is confirmation. It is confirmation. That's what matters. To me, I was going to ask everybody the same thing. What the, you know, the song says, what do you know what you have in Mary? Here, we the question here is, what do you know what, who is in you? Amen. Right? Uh, and I think that's the key thing. If you don't know that, then you have not understood your identity as who you are as a child of God, okay, mm. as a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, for me, the other thing that came about was I was reminded about Daniel, book of Daniel 4, where Daniel prophesied the rock that broke the foot of the statue of the, you know, that, and that rock was actually the end, ending the king, the Roman Empire and all the previous empires and reestablishing the kingdom of God on earth. And he goes on to say that that rock becomes, covers the entire earth. So what started, even, that was 400 over years, I think four five. I don't know how long Daniel's prophecy, four, five hundred years, mm -hmm. right? The key thing is then it came about in Mary. Mm -hmm. And she, since she was born, Jesus was born, the moment he was born, he was the seed and the rock. Mm -hmm. And he was born during the Roman Empire, who were actually ruling even Israel. Mm. And he and he for predicted everything what's going to happen, and today the his the kingdom of heaven God is being is covering the entire earth. Mm. So that's how it's working. That's how it's going to happen, and uh, no one can stop it. Yeah, no one, even the no the devil, nor any human being can stop it from happening, mm. because God is in control. And uh, so it is for us to understand and rejoice the power that we have. I mean, if everything that says, you know, do you know that the, you know, he came to heal the lame, he came to heal the sick, he came to heal the deaf, he said the captive, everything that he was, the song was talking about Jesus Amen. is who we are. Amen. We have the same power and authority. Jesus said greater work we have to do. Right? So, to me, this song is is it's not just about uh, you know asking Mary the question. The song should be turned and ask ourselves the question: yes. Can I do all those things? Can I do all those things? Do you believe you have the power and the authority and the gift? Mm. Because He's already in you, yeah. right? And Jesus said, "I am the wine; you are the branches," mm. right? And without me, you can do nothing. So he's already in us. Mm. So that's a question we need to take. But even as we reflect this festive season, right? Mm. We must look at it not as, as Jesus as a baby, because like what Papa Luke said on Sunday, 
we don't keep on celebrating a baby in every birthday right <laughs> yes. he is already up in heaven he's finished his job and he's also in us right so we need to ask ourselves this festive season if christ is in me is christ is formed in me and if i if, what, if i am able to do everything that jesus was able to do when he was walking this son of man why am i not doing it how should i go about asking god to give me the revelation and the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to accomplish very the very things that jesus was able to do amen as we know from the uh, psalms you know it says god you know it says who are you know who is man that you created him just lower than the angels as we said you know it's not the angels it's about lower slightly lower than god as, as then that's what it is okay so so to me i think this speaks to every one of us here do you believe what you do you know and understand and believe and accept what who is in you mm -hmm. right and if you do and if you go step out and do what god jesus can do what the apostles were able to do in the book of acts none of us here should be list talking sitting here on this in this we teaching discipleship training we should be conducting teaching to train others to be and bring them into the king as disciples amen not one training like this we should be having hundreds of trainings like this going on in parallel leading others into his into become apostles and ambassadors and that's what i believe this song is all about amen because that's what jesus did he came he came as a one person one seed right he impacted israel he impacted from him the disciples impacted the rest of the world mm. right so look i'm looking at it 4 8 12 there's 13 14 of us here today right if if 12 can impact the world 14 of us can do even greater work amen amen so so this is my encouragement don't just receive be doers mm -hmm. of the word not just receivers of the word mm -hmm. that's where you'll see transformation that's where you'll see the power that's where you will see miracles happening in your lives as you do what god asks you to do mm -hmm. amen thank you guys amen amen awesome um so something that i really felt the lord saying uh, even as uh, as we were in a time of worship and uh i just really felt he, he, you know uh just like mary she she was um you know she became pregnant uh she did not know a man it was all by the holy spirit right she had two choices to give birth or to abort okay she had two choices but which choice uh did she make she made the choice to be obedient and to give birth to the savior what about today for us we have the choice to give birth to birth what god has put within us or to abort what god has put within us which one are we going to choose today that's what i i felt the lord saying to us because he has put something within us he has put a dream he has put his destiny he's called us he's 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 made us for a purpose amen with a purpose on purpose for a purpose so today we have a choice are we going to give birth to that that he has put within us or are we going to abort what has been placed within us we have a choice which one are we going to make that's what i really felt for us today let's make the right choice because mary made the right choice right she chose to be obedient in a time when she was uh probably shamed they, they would have because in that time if you became pregnant and you know you were not married and all of those imagine imagine what she went through in the physical but she still chose to be obedient um she still chose to give birth to what had been placed within her to who had been placed within her and look at the wonder of that so what about us are we willing against all odds to stand and say i will give birth to the dream to the purpose to the destiny that god has placed within me amen 
how many of us feel that we would want to do that? Give birth to what Jesus, what God, our Father has put within us. Amen. Amen. So with that, I am going to hand over to Papa Luke for another session on how we can do this practically. Because there are many things that come our way to stop us, to try to become obstacles in our lives. And those are the things that Papa Luke is dealing with right now. So we sometimes know it in our mind, but he's giving us some of the tools that we can use to overcome it practically. So let's listen to what he has to say today. And while you're listening, remember, we are a company of kings with godly solutions. God is giving us godly solutions. Amen. So let's listen out with those ears, with kingly ears, listening for godly solutions. Thank you, Papa Luke. Over to you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Pastor Rebecca. Hello, Kingdom family, once again. Good to see everyone. Good to see everyone. Hallelujah. And um, yep, it's going to be another awesome night. Who has, by the way, who has enjoyed this so far? You know, who is this been really, really good? Real good or really, really good? <laughs> Eh? So, um, yeah, like Ruben, if it's been really good, just uh, put a, 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 a thumbs up in the chat room so I can see, because, oh, Pop said exceedingly good, very good, love it, amen, amen. So that is good, and tonight is going to be another uh, um, moving forward, Bring it's like bringing together what we have been uh, hearing so far, <clears throat> because this is, if there is anything that is going to uh, stifle our progress, this is it. If there's anything that will derail us and cause us to move outside of what God has planned for us, this is it. Um, but thank God that Jesus said that anything that is brought that is brought to light is no more hidden. And the, the tricks and the, the, the scheme of the enemy has been busted. So right now, the light of heaven is shining upon us. Amen. Let me share my screen so that we can go right into it. Minimize this so that I can see everything. Beautiful. Okay, can you see my slide? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Telling yourself the truth, part four. The, the subtitle is a bit of an interesting one. What must I do to be miserable? <laughs> Uh, or when the truth does not set us free. Uh, would, will there ever be a time or a moment when truth cannot set us free? I think the second line is answer to the first one because it's a, what must I do to be miserable? Um, I will remain miserable if truth cannot set me free. If truth stop to be truth, when truth is no more truth, when truth is no more effective to do something, then I am in trouble. But the good news is truth is truth. Truth has not changed form. So this is the topic we are facing tonight. And um, today, we want to understand that there are three basic, three main points that is going to govern tonight, okay? So we really want to understand how to locate as well as identify the misbelief in your thinking and in your self-talk. That is what we want to uncover tonight. You have heard us talk about this misbelief, misbelief. 
many of us, you, you know, we still are trying to get our head around it. But how do we, what do we do? How do we uh, get to this? So tonight, the, I, the whole goal is to help us locate and identify. If we can locate something and we can identify the thing, and, and then it's like the problem is on way to solving. Number two, we do not just only locate and identify the misbeliefs, but we take time to argue against those misbeliefs. We will take time to look at them critically and um, either argue or confront or uh, um, face, face those things that have been tormenting and torturing us. These are an unseen enemy. These are enemies that are like the air. They, you know, we don't see the air, but the air is there. The air is working. If you really want to feel the power of the air, block your nose for a while and don't breathe. Then you begin to understand how valuable the air is. You know? So some of these things are out there. They are out there because we see the devastations and see the the, the, the destructions they are causing on daily basis, both as individuals or as families, in marriages, in relationships, between communities, between nations. There is always misbelief. But the thing is, because it has not been located or identified, that is why it continues to go on that radar. It continues to go undictated. But the moment we locate and identify them, we do the next thing. We face them, okay? You've heard us use all these words a lot, but tonight we are going to uh, practice, practical, practice them. So number three is if we locate and identify them and argue and confront them, then we do the next one. We are going to replace those misbeliefs. We replace them with something. Remember, Jesus said that whenever a spirit goes out of a house, it goes through a dry places and he keep wondering and he will come again to look whether that house is occupied or still empty. If the house is empty, what will he do? He won't go in, he will go and look for another seven. And uh, now when one demon was in that house, it was causing trouble. What will it be like when eight demons are in there now? The, and Jesus said the worst, the last state will be worse than the former. Okay. So whenever we locate and identify, then argue and confront those, things, those misbeliefs and know them for what they are. They are sabotaging our lives. Then we replace them with the truth. Amen. So. These are the things that we, we really want to uh, latch on tonight. And um, so let's go. When the truth does not set free, okay. You know, people who think counseling is simple cause more guilt as well as anxiety than the, you know, than the result. Um, we're going to use a counseling as a, a case study for us today because um, I, I believe everyone who is here had come through church and we've come through Christian uh, activities and Christian churches and we all have been through one counseling or the other. We have been through one issue because there are things we want to solve. Um, a lot of counseling actually compound the problem. They even make the situation worse, okay? So they cause more anxiety and guilt than they want to resolve, okay? So there is a beautiful name that we'll be using tonight is the name Esther. This beautiful lady, uh, we're going to hear this name over and over tonight because it is good. He, he, she had been devastated by the counseling she received, even though the words were not, you know, we are true enough. 
The words are true. We're going to see. Not, uh, not every word is lies. Even some true words, but used within on, on, on area where you cannot identify what they are all about can also be devastating, as we are going to see in the case of this beautiful uh, Esther today. Okay? Imagine you are declared in the following dialogue we're going to have now. You have gone to someone you respect, seeking advice and counsel because you can't shake the depression you are experiencing. So let's go for it. Okay? So this is you. You have just gone to a counselor. And you started by saying, I've been feeling depressed lately. I can't seem to pick myself up. I don't know what's wrong with me. This is a genuine cry of a heart. Someone is going through something. She says, I've been feeling depressed lately. I can't seem to pick myself up. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, now the counselor comes in. Why are you feeling so bad? And you said, I don't know. I can't figure it out. The counselor comes in. Is there some sin in your life you haven't confessed? Has anyone had this before? Is there some sin in your life? In other words, what you are going through is a result of sin. So, my beloved Esther said, I don't think so, but I will, I'm gladly I will gladly confess anything at all if you think I should. Okay? So the counselor says, someone you haven't forgiven? Could it be an unforgiven spirit walking around you? Could that be the case? Esther go back to say, I don't know so. I don't think so, but I will gladly pray if you think I should. Okay? The counselor comes again. We need to pray for the healing of your memories. And at this point, the counselor started praying, started binding and losing, you know, the, the, the healing of the memories and everything. He, he just latched on uh, Esther and prayed for Esther. Okay? And uh, after praying, the counselor continued. He said, you know, my friend, you have to realize you are a child of God. Shame on you for these feelings. Jesus died to take away sadness and gloom. And the scripture tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. Wow. And uh, Esther said, yes. I know you are right. I feel so terrible about being depressed. I don't do much rejoicing. Okay? The counselor comes again. You probably don't praise the Lord either. Do you praise the Lord every day? Esther said, oh, I guess I don't really. I mean, especially when I'm feeling depressed like this. The counselor comes again. When a Christian is truly walking in the spirit, the word says he will experience life and peace. Your feelings of depression are in the flesh, not in the spirit. You are not praising and you are not walking in the spirit. Okay? Esther at this point said, I'm sure you are right. My wife or my husband or my friend tells me the same thing because somebody will say something that you've been hearing over and over and now you begin to agree that that thing is true. She said, I've been hearing this all the time. I'm told I should be an overcomer, but I'm really so depressed. She keep hitting the nail at the head. But brother, sister, counselor is all over the place. Okay, counselor comes again. Just listen to the word of your mouth. Will you? What you say is what you get, you know? And uh, Esther said, what I say is what I get? 
The counselor said, that's right. You say you are depressed and you will be depressed. And Esther says, so I should say I'm not depressed. The counselor says, the scripture tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Ask and you shall receive, you know? So Esther says, okay, I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed. Okay, counselor said, that's better. Now just rejoice in the Lord. Pray, praise the Lord and you will be over that depression in no time. Woo! What a counselor. What a counsel. Do you know that this is a true scenario, something, you know, that happened in the church around Christian counselors. Do you think Esther really was helped? Do you think she got anything out of this whole process? And when you look at that, you know, there is a bit of scripture thrown here and there. There are a bit of things say here and there because every, scripture is true. Rejoicing the Lord is scriptural. That's the truth. You know, praising the Lord is scripture. You know, that's truth. But throwing it in this situation and using it as bashing, the, does this in any way help enhance? Even though at the end, she has the allies to say, I'm not depressed, I'm not depressed. Okay, so now she's known to say I'm not depressed, but she was never ever told. She have, I don't know how she got to that conclusion. The way she got to that conclusion will not give her any permanent victory. You now can understand why we are hammering on locating, facing, as well as replacing. Because until that is done, you are, you will always be a victim of those circumstances. Okay, so now when the truth does not set us free, continue. Now, how will you feel after this counseling session if you are Esther? How will you feel? Will you feel that, oh, I've had a great day, oh, all my problem is over now? Or will you feel something else? Probably very frustrated and perhaps more guilty and depressed than you even started. Because from there, you've been told that there is sin working in you that you haven't confessed. There is somebody unforgiveness that is working in you. These are more added to remember you brought depression on, on the table, but now you've been told that there is a scene working. You were at the same time told that, uh, oh, you, you have this, there is an unforgiveness that is working somewhere. And uh, not only that, it's going to be, let's heal your memory. Let's pray. Everything I say is what goes on around the church. And you wonder why people, their mental and emotional life is worse around the church than it is in the world. Because people can easily be confused because we use scriptures and use events and things to compound the situation or problem that people are already. So she got out there worse than she was ever, okay? And why did the truth not set her free. Why the truth? Remember we are saying when the truth does not set free. Why do you think the truth did not set her free? Why did the truth not set free, set you free? Okay, let's examine this dialogue to see what was going on in this counselor's mind. Okay, we will be safe to say this counselor believe, this counselor believe, you know, counseling is very simple once you become a Christian. 
You know, a lot of people, because they are Christians, they just go about telling everybody everything, you know. Especially you leave, you pray for someone to do the sinner's prayer. After that, you say, now that you, you have received Christ, you have to pray three times a day. You have to read your Bible. And uh, we just give them all this do, 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 do. And we go celebrating that we have done great. But what have we really done? A lot of people think counseling is simple and they can dampen. Not only counsel, giving people advice. Talking to people anyhow. In this place, we, 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 uh, we take what we do very seriously. If we're going to talk to you, we take it very seriously. Okay. So this is number one. Number two. Okay. All you have to do is know some scriptural verses and some popular current teachings, you know. Sometimes you say, oh, last week I, this pastor preached this, this pastor said this, and that becomes a rule of tongue. How to? What to do? And this has been a disaster, especially when it comes to prosperity teaching. You know, people who, uh, who hammer uh, tithe and offerings, and he said that if you don't give tithe, you are cursed. Many believe that. Many will say the reason I'm suffering is because I have not been given tithe. God have cost me. That's not true. Okay. So, number two, there is no need to listen to people since feeling bad and having unresolved problems is always a result of sin and failure to apply the word of God. This is what we are learning from this counseling. Okay. So, if you have a problem, don't. You know, don't look for people that will really help you. There's no need to listen. All you do, con just conclude, I am suffering because of my sin. I am suffering because uh, I'm not a good Christian. I'm not reading the Bible as I should, you know. I, I don't go to church as I could. That's why this is happening to me. That's what we are learning from this scenario. Number three, knowing scripture verses is all a counselor needs to help a person who is having problems. If a troubled person doesn't want to hear the truth, it is just too bad. Have you ever talked to someone or someone talked to you and tried to uh, push the Bible down your throat and you said, because you did not accept what I told you, you know, that is why we are going through what we are going through. This is when the truth does not set free. Because the way it's being applied is absolutely and completely out of context, out of how heaven designed truth to work. Am I making sense? Is this true? I can only see one person, my beloved Pastor Rupika. You are the only one I'm seeing, so that is beautiful. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's go on. Now, Esther was told to go home and quit being upset because being so upset was sinful and self-centered. Wow. She was said to go home. In other words, suck it in. But she has a real problem in her life. She has real issue. She's going through. She needs to talk to somebody. And talking to someone will help her locate and identify the source. And lead her to where she stop and say, hang on, what am I really saying to myself? What am I talking? What is going on in my mind? What am I telling myself? Is this the truth? Did God say this to me? Has heaven said this to me? Is this the abundant life that Jesus... No, it's not. Then, what is the truth? We replace those lies with the truth. I hope you are following tonight. I keep repeating this because our goal tonight is to help you understand exactly. Because we, we go through life every day. Things keep on being thrown at us every day. But if we understand and master this act of tracing, facing, and replacing, we 
become absolutely in charge of our life. We become who our heavenly father has made us to be. He believes in you. He believes in me. Okay. So her friends told her she was selfish to feel so depressed. And if she repent, if she repented of her selfishness, the Lord will cleanse her of her sins and she will feel better again. Have you had that uh, in church over the years? Eh? Okay. She was not offered any means of understanding her own dynamics or any procedure for change. She had only the stern demand to do what she couldn't do. Everything she's asked to go and do is what she couldn't do in the first place. There's no way she can do that. Some of us go to church, by the time we leave, we, we live more depressed than we got in there. Because some of the things that are thrown at us is depressing, like Esther. Okay, so Esther was supposed to just stop feeling bad and start loving the Lord the way she ought to. And after all, he has done so much for her. Why wasn't she more thankful? Is there another word? The more Esther hear this, the more she die inside. She, the more she think that this God is not interested in me. This God that is punishing me with my depression. Okay? So, the more time she had these words, the more deeply she agonized over her failures as well as her mistakes. Okay. She began to believe that she was worthless and inadequate, that maybe she wasn't even a Christian. Have you ever doubted yourself? That's why I thank God we don't approach, you know, we don't relate or ask anyone to be a Christian because uh, those who are still doubting, they are not sure whether they are or not. But when you know your identity as a son, that changes everything. That is eternal. That is, I mean, it's something that no one can take away from you. But the people who call themselves Christians are still doubting whether they are or not. Because they're trying to measure their Christianity by what they do and what they don't do. And when, them, when they don't do anything, when they didn't do anything right, they, 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 that uh, uh, classify them as failures. Okay, so sometimes the troubled person such as Esther will be accused of having demons. Aha. Isn't this interesting? There's a lady that, you know, in her church, she actually was uh, uh, told that she has a demon of national pride. They call and say, oh, sister, you have a demon and the, the, the demon of your national pride. You know why? Because she always dress in her costume, in her national costume to go to church. And some people could not bear with it anymore. And now they said to her, you are possessed by the demon of national pride. That's the first time I hear that in my life that there is a demon called national pride. <laughs> okay. And we've seen how a lot of issues in people's lives are attributed to demons. And if you see where demons are being casted, you see how some people are even molested. Some people be twisting and rolling on the ground. Yeah. Does demon possess people? Absolutely, yes. But I will tell you that 99% of a lot of things we attribute to demons has nothing to do with demons. They are misbeliefs that that demon latched in to torment and torture our lives. Truth sets free, Jesus says. Truth sets free. Another uh, beautiful lady had this amazing thousands of dollars worth of acts at, uh, in her house. And someone come in and say, sister, there is demon of arts in your house. And she quickly believe and she start burning all these 
amazing because you want to get rid of the demons of earth. I know people who have traveled to Asia, you know, they've been to Thailand and they buy something, clothes or some ornaments of something. And then someone will say, oh, you, the demon follow you home. You know, the demon, you got to get rid of that thing you bought from uh, uh, Bali. You got to get rid because there is a demon attached to that. And that is what is torturing and tormenting you. Can you imagine? Well, what you believe is what you get. That's why we, our belief must be right. Misbelief does work. And the, the way they work is they torture, they torture, you know, rob peace, rob, rob us of hope. That's what misbelief does. Does the enemy latches on them? Absolutely, yes. But when we get rid of them, that's why we have to trace them, we have to face them and we have to replace them. Okay, so now the help that doesn't help and the truth that doesn't set people free can be due to number one, counselor or helper who hasn't any real or genuine love for people who are hurting. Can you see the help that doesn't really help? And the truth that doesn't really set free. If someone, you know, come to you say, "Oh, sin is working in your life. That's why you're suffering." A lot of people believe that that God is punishing them or that God has given them sickness. That God has given it to to humble them. That is lie. Okay. But anyone who wants to help, and that is where this is really important to us. Remember, this is a training for us. We're not only we are getting the best out of it for our own self, but heaven is preparing us to help others. If you see our introduction on the pamphlet online, this, is, this could not just be only for me, but the Lord is preparing us to help others free. Now, if you're going to help others, even as a pastor, you're not going to put them down and ask them, have you paid your tithe for the last one month? And if the person say, no, he say, now you see why the devil is torturing you. That is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. The thing is that person is going to live there believing what you say to be true and that is going to destroy them. Okay, so. Another reason is a failure to hear what the troubled person is really saying. This is very, very important. And instead of listening for leads into the problem, you've heard us talk about the circle. Why do we go through the circle? Because as we walk ourselves through, we see leads, leads into the problems. Instead of listening to the leads, they keep on shutting the people down by quoting scripture. The Bible said, the Bible said. So where we use the Bible to slap people around, to shut them down, that is not wise. That is not the way to help people that have needs, that are suffering of any situation or any problem. Okay? Another clue can be, not bothering to learn anything about the troubled person. Okay, it's good to understand the person because when you learn about the person, then you will be able to know how to help them. So what we are doing is like a, a two-sided. Two not only we are helping ourselves and getting the best and becoming everything God has made us to be, but heaven is equipping us so that we can know how to help others, amen. All right, so using the word of God as a club to beat them with the truth, that is issue. Another is knowing all the answers. A lot of people know all the answers and being ready with solutions at all times. Okay, a lot of people think instead of probing, instead of asking questions, instead of trying to find out, what the person believes. Now, the mistaken thought that the counselor is a better and a more worthy person than 
they disturb the person. A lot of us put our life in the hand of somebody. We may call them as pastor or our prophets or our leader. We put our life in their hand. And anything they say, we don't question. We don't want to stop and say, but Lord, what do you say on this issue? What do you say? So by putting trust, thinking they are better than us, a lot of Christians believe that their pastors or leaders are more spiritual than they. That is misbelief. Personally, for me, there is nothing that I have that you don't have. And there is no way we see ourselves most, no matter colors implement us, we don't see ourselves in any way more superior than you. As a matter of fact, everything we share is what we have experienced ourselves. We don't teach what we don't know. We don't ever say anything that we ourselves have not experienced in any areas of our lives. If we want to talk about wealth, it's because we have tested it as us. If we want to talk about family, we, we are family people. If we want to talk about friends, anything we talk about, we speak from live experience. Okay. But the truth does set free indeed. Amen. So this is the best part of it. Truth does set free. Okay. So now, a frequent cause of this uh, disordered behavior is a person's failure to examine his or her beliefs. I repeat, a frequent cause of disordered behavior is a person's failure to examine his or her belief. And by that, I mean attitudes, ideas, thoughts, and self-talk. Okay. And the concomitant tendency not to question them. Even though this believes, not many people actually stop to say, what I believe, is it the truth? What this thing I believe, or this thing I'm telling myself, is it the truth? But we learn how to, the day we begin to, you know, we can stand out and look at what we're telling ourselves or look at what is going on over here and we bring it out there and bring it to our face and, and look at it. Is this the truth? When I say I am ugly, is that the truth? Am I really ugly? Is there any ugly person on earth? There is none. There is absolutely nothing like ugly. I don't know where that word comes from. Okay. So we examine those beliefs and um, we check them. Okay. We check them. We question them. Though they may be painful, they may be cruel as well as they may, you know, untrue. We, we, we question. And it is in question we find out the answer. That's how we resolve issues. These things have been, I'm beating myself over and over and over. Is it the truth? And if it's not the truth, why do I hang on to what is not truth? Philippians tells us, he said, finally, my brethren, what things ever that is true, what things ever that is honest, what things ever that is of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praise, he say, think on these things. We've been given a pattern of thinking that will enhance our mental and emotional life. Thinking truth thinking truth. Truth. If we get this, I tell you 99.9% .9 of our emotional problems are solved. Why? Because this is God's antidote. This is God's answer. Truth. Amen. All right. Locating and identifying pain causing fabrications plus learning the factual reality-based truth was the therapeutic, look at the word miracle, which began Esther's dramatic recovery. Amen. Locating and identifying the pain-causing fabrications plus learning the factual reality based on truth was the therapeutic miracle 
which began Esther's dramatic recovery. All right, example. Now, one of the things that led Esther to break through is saying to her, Esther, when you wake up in the morning and sit on the edge of the bed, what are your first thoughts? What are your first thoughts? Look at her answer. Say, I don't know if I'm thinking anything. I just feel rotten. I feel like I wish I could just die. She paused, stares at the lamp on the desk, then says, I tell myself I can't handle this. I can't handle any of it. Wow. Every day she wake up in the morning, she start by saying, I am rotten. I'm not good. I'm not good. But the brother, uh, sister, counselor, did he get to this point? No, he didn't. He just said, pray, 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 fast, fast, fast. Do seven days fasting, you know? Or do if it's seven days didn't work, do 14. And if 14 didn't work, do 21 day fasting. Oh, you're going to get your breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Or if that fell, get a bottle, one liter of olive oil and pour it on your head, you know? Or bring a, a five liter of water and the, the, the priest will bless the water for you. And now you begin to use your broom and drive evil spirit around the house with water. Wow. By the time you look at what is going in Esther's heart, starting from the morning she woke up, she said, I don't know what I'm thinking, but her feeling is working. He said, I just feel rotten. Was she rotten? No, she's not. I feel like I wish I could just die. Why? You know, she didn't stop. They said, I tell myself, I can't can't do this anymore. And each time we use that word, I can't. You know what? It, it zap energy from you. I can't. I can't. It zap and it keeps zapping, zapping, zapping. Okay. Let's repeat the three points. Misbelief therapy outline. Number one, locating and identifying the misbelief in your thinking and self-talk. It is very, very important. Esther's misbelief, at least in part, was I am a failure at life because I'm not the wife or mother I ought I'll be. And being married isn't what is, you know, it's cracked up to be at all. When she got married, she thought marriage would be heaven on earth. But it wasn't, and she was disappointed. First, she got into it with misbelief. Okay, so, but locating the problem. Number two, arguing against the misbelief. I'm not a failure just because I didn't meet expectations that we are unrealistic in the first place. Marriage may not be what I dreamed it would be. That's true, but. There are some things about it that aren't all that bad. All of a sudden, something begins to shift. She look at it. Are you a failure? I say, no, I'm not. Whenever anything look to you and say you're a failure, look back to the face of the, I say, no, I'm not. I'm not a failure. I've never been and I will never be. Amen. Next, number three, replacing the misbelief with truth. How does that work? In spite of the unpleasantness and disappointments and daily trials I experience, I can carry on. The demand that I be joyful and energetic at all times are unrealistic, okay? And Jesus died on the cross so I can be unashamed to be real. I am not a failure because I feel bad at times. I am born again. I am a child of God. 
with a savior who saved me from my own demands and my own expectations of myself and others. Wow. Is this good? Hallelujah. So we've reached our end. I think I did well. <laughs> Here is our discussion point tonight. You know, what you heard tonight, and you've heard me repeat over and over and over, what we're going to do tonight is actually begin to practice what we have just said. We begin to learn and begin to, you know, gain the ability to locate. So I will ask you, I say, what does it mean to identify Ah, oh, that type two times. That's good. Identify, identify the misbelief in your thinking and the self-talk. Okay. What does it mean? What does it mean to identify? Because you hear this and you say, but Pastor Luke or, or Papa Luke, I like Papa Luke. That's good. Be faster for now. <laughs> um, you say, but how do I do this? I've, how? We will take time in our breakout room now because that is the next stage we're going to go in now. Actually to begin to literally uh, uh, begin to identify things and begin to learn how to, how this work, okay? What do you understand by arguing against the misbelief? What, if you hear arguing or facing it or, uh, we stand it, or what, there are lots of words there that we can use to say, "Hang on, I'm not, I'm not a failure." Even though this circumstance is saying that, but I am not. I am. I love when uh, Rehina started tonight. It's it's really amazing because that word, "I am," "I am," we take it for granted. Jesus, I am, but then when they say, "I am sick," "I am sick." What do you do? You hear yourself, but tonight Rehina was able to stop. Say, hang on. I just say I am, but that's not what Jesus said. I am, like I am the truth. I am. So will I use I am for any negative thing to qualify myself? I am no good. I am a failure. I am poor. I you know each time we say, say hang on, that's not truth. The moment you say, no, nah, uh, nah, that's not truth, you're actually beginning to argue. You are now saying, hi, let's face this thing. Let's look at this thing for what it is. Okay, number three. How do you replace the misbeliefs with truth? And we're going to give some examples. Okay. So, having said this, I shall bring us in again. We are back into our uh, men room. Whew. How is that? Really, Beautiful. Really, really good. That is awesome, Papa Luke. Um, thank you for the practical steps of learning to trace, face, and replace. And uh, I think all of you would agree that just knowing the practical manner of doing it really helps, amen? amen? So we are going to go into the breakout rooms and I would really encourage you to go into the breakout rooms with us um, and spend that time thinking of a scenario in your life. And, and we're going to stop the recording. So it's completely confidential and what is said in the room will stay in the 